Hey everybody, I'm JJ, you're watching Reality Survival, and today we're going to talk about 35 tips to stay safe from a stalker. Now, having a stalker can be a pretty serious situation, alright, so this, none of this that I'm going to give you is legal advice, I recommend that you talk to a legal professional if you have a stalking situation, talk to an attorney, talk to the police, you know, those kinds of things. Um, because they can they can get out of control pretty quick alright and now these are just generalized tips I don't know your situation and these things might not be applicable for your situation so take it for what it's worth they're just some things to think about when it comes to having to deal with a stalker so the first one is right out of the gate you want to get legal advice from a qualified attorney who can provide guidance on how to obtain a restraining order a protective order you know or just to ensure that your legal rights are protected based off of your situation you want to when you go to the authorities take your attorney with you to go report the situation to the police um, and this it obviously you need to know some descriptive you know things about your stalker right you, you're going to have to figure out, try to figure out who it is and, and all those kinds of things if you don't know the person. The majority of stalking situations, usually you have some idea who the person is. Uh, but if you don't, you might have to try to, you know, sort of covertly take some photos, take some pictures, something along those lines, you know, something like that. Um, but for most people, you generally have an idea who that stalker is. And if you get a protective order, it really it really helps. The police will take you a lot more seriously if you show up with an attorney to talk with them. Um, number two is stay with friends or family. Um, you know, just you can stay with somebody who's trusted friends or family or something like that. Just until things settle down. Sometimes just removing yourself from the situation is going to help things um, you know go to a different area maybe in a different zip code you know something along those lines number three is um, as a temporary fix if you don't have any friends or family around the area you could go to a domestic violence shelter where you could be provided with a safe place to stay counseling legal assistance that kind of thing although I will say that the quality of these shelters kind of depends on where you're at and that kind of thing so temper your expectations a little on that one. Number four is attend support groups for domestic violence shelters, or, or excuse me, attend support groups for domestic violence survivors. Um, you can get emotional support and guidance from other people who've actually gone through similar experiences. They might be able to point you to, you know, good resources in your area for your situation. Number five, is uh, if you have a regular cell phone with you know the normal big three companies turn that off you know l let the battery drain down completely throw it in a drawer somewhere and then go and get you a prepaid burner cell phone and change the number on that pretty regularly now some of this stuff is being overly cautious and it might not be applicable like I said for what you have going on this is this is sort of just thinking about uh, situations that could get, um, you know, pretty serious. So, um, so just apply it as necessary for your situation. Uh, let's see. Next one is. Oh, and the other thing I want to say is make sure you write down all your important contact numbers in an old style phone book, you know, address book. Because if you're going to be changing your burner phones every month or so, then it's it's kind of a pain. And so if you have those contacts and the contact information written down, that helps a lot. Number six is delete all your old social media accounts. If possible, just don't even be on social media at all. If for whatever reason you're going to use them, never post any pictures of yourself and use a fake name um, and, you know, an alias of some sort that is not attributable to you. Um, number seven, dump all your old email accounts, delete those accounts, and um, set up, you know, fake nondescript email addresses 
you know, just a string of numbers or something like that or, or you know, random sets of letters or whatever, but you don't want anything to do with names or nicknames or anything like that. Number eight, change your name, legally change your name to make it more difficult for a stalker to find you. <coughs> also change your social security number and don't forget to update um, any important, you know, places that you do business with like banks, insurance companies, even the IRS um, and any debtors that you have. Make sure they get your new name change information and then get, make sure you go and get all new ID cards. Number nine, move to another town in another state in another region of the country. Change your address and have your mail forwarded to a PO box or a mail forwarding uh, service. The, the United States Postal Service will forward your mail for up to a year. Um, when you do that though, you gotta realize some of your mail might not be forwarded and you could end up losing some, so be careful about that. Um, and there's different mail forwarding services out there, Earth Class Mail, Virtual Post Mail. If you just Google it, you can find different ones. And they can, they can basically, what they do is they'll act as a, a home address for you and then when you receive mail at that place, they'll forward it on to your next address. If you want to have a double layer of security, make that next address be a P.O. box. And then that way um, you have to go to the P.O., you know, to the post office to pick up your mail. And the, the mail is not actually ever coming to your residence. So it just makes it harder to find you. Okay, uh, the next one here is... If you can't, number 10, if you can't move, make sure you change the locks on your home. Um, you can also use a smart lock, which can be controlled remotely with your phone. And the, the, the idea behind this, yes, some of them obviously could be hacked. If, if your stalker is a really techie guy, then maybe this is not going to be a good option. But um, the thought process here is, is if you've got your hands full of groceries and stuff, when you get home, before you even get out of the car, you can unlock the door and then get your groceries, get whatever, walk into the house and lock it right behind you. You don't have to stand there at the door with your keys and all that kind of stuff because that can be a, a potentially vulnerable area and vulnerable time for you. So it just might make your entry coming and going a little quicker. Just always make sure that you lock the door behind you when you come in, when you go inside. And I do that no matter what, even when I'm home, I live out in the country and I always, my doors are always locked. Whenever I come through them, they go, back, they go locked again. Um, just get in that habit. Okay, uh, number 11 is obtain a concealed carry permit and take a few self-defense shooting courses. The latter is equally as important as the first part of that. Having a gun is fine, but if you don't actually take classes and learn how to use it proficiently, it's not gonna do you any good. So make sure that you take a couple, at least two classes. Um, classes that can be found pretty much anywhere in any town are the NRA, um, what is it, the defense inside the home class, and then the defense outside the home class for concealed carry. Those are good basic classes. You know, they're not super high speed, John Lovell War Poet Society, you know, Warrior Poet Society kind of stuff. But they're, they're good, solid classes that'll get you familiar you know, with firearms and with what the law is in your state and all that kind of stuff. So something like that at a minimum. Excuse me. All right. Um, next one is, number 12, is get a large, dogs, large dog or dogs, but have them trained for protection. Start protection training classes. Having a large dog that'll go up and lick somebody to death doesn't do you a bit of good. But having a large dog that's trained for personal security can be a huge asset, especially when it comes to a home invasion and keeping somebody from trying to invade your home. Number 13 is attend a self-defense class like uh, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu or Muay Thai boxing. Really any sport is fine as long as your reg or any uh, martial arts is fine as long as you're regularly engaging in full contact sparring with other people. That's a really critical element to it because um, that is what helps you understand and build your capabilities when you're actually engaging in combat with people. Um, that's I feel like that's really important. Number 14, install a security system in your home including cameras and motion sensors with an audible alarm. 
it doesn't even hurt to have some cameras on the inside in like the main areas of your house you know where the entry points are and all that kind of stuff because sometimes outdoor cameras don't really do well because of sun and different kind of circumstances and, and all that but indoor cameras you, you can almost always get facial quality on the indoor cameras so that way you could use uh, if somebody did enter your house and it was you know recording to the the cloud then you could use that um, you know to ID the person if it wasn't somebody that you already knew okay uh, number 15 inform your neighbors um, you know if you're if you move or if you're if you can't move talk to your neighbors about the situation let them know about the situation and have them call the police if they see anybody poking around your house or anything like that uh, let's see here number 16 be vigilant um, you need to make sure that you're always aware of your surroundings you're always staying vigilant but most importantly being in a stalking situation is a high stress event and a lot of times you will you will find that people are in these situations they want to take the edge off and they want to go out drinking they want to you know go get high you know those kind of things to let let the steam off kind of thing you know that's the wrong thing to do you don't want to put yourself in a vulnerable situation you can't stay vigilant and you can't stay watching around you if you're lowering your inhibitions and your awareness and all that kind of stuff so stay away from bars stay away from you know going out with friends and partying and all that kind of stuff number 17 avoid establishing a predictable routine such as leaving and returning to your home at the same time every day um, or taking the same routes to work every day or shopping at the same grocery stores every day that kind of thing you want to kind of try to switch things up a little bit if you are less predictable it's harder for a, tr a stalker to you know stay engaged in watching you all right number 18 is vary your work hours um, and you know change your schedule up as often as possible and obviously if you can work during the daytime and not have to work late hours or early morning hours then that would be best number 19 if you suspect that your stalker is tracking your vehicle go to if you're not a real mechanical person who can look under your vehicle yourself then go to a jiffy lube style you know oil change place any one of them would be fine explain the situation to the manager and say hey can i pay you guys to take a really close look under there and see if you can find any kind of magnetic gps device that's stuck to the frame of the vehicle or up under the fender wells or up under the bumper and see if there's anything there because I think he's got a tracking device on my vehicle for you know whatever reason. That's just one possibility. You could go to any mechanics place or anything like that to do that. Number 20 is use a safety deposit box uh, and that's going to be to store important documents like passport, birth certificate, financial records. That way if the stalker broke into your home your important documents will be safe you can also keep a scanned copy of those on a secure thumb drive as well it's not uncommon for stalkers to want to go in and get important uh, device or papers and and stuff like that from their victims so uh, make sure that you have that stuff secured okay <clears throat> Number 21 is get a new vehicle. Changing the vehicle is one thing that's going to help with just, you know, lowering your signature and, and him knowing what you're driving and that kind of thing. But um, especially if you move, then it's a good time to get a new vehicle when you move as well, right? Um, when you're looking at buying a vehicle, you want to preferably get a heavier SUV or a truck with four wheel drive, something that's more sturdy. That way, in case you get in a road rage road rage type incident where your stalker is trying to engage with you while you're driving you have something that is built that's more sturdy more secure and in a crazy extreme circumstance if they tried to block off the road and box you in somewhere then you could ram through you know their their little roadblock thing that they have with a bigger vehicle you can do it with smaller vehicles too but they'll sustain a lot less damage if it's a bigger more sturdy vehicle um, number 22 is use a prepaid debit card to make it harder for anyone to track your purchases again not really necessary in most circumstances 
but if it was somebody like an ex-husband or somebody who had access to your finances or who might know your social security number if you opted not to change it or something like that, then it might be advisable to use a prepaid debit card like that. Try to use all cash as much as possible. Use money orders to pay bills, different things like that. That can kind of help um, lower your online signature a little bit. And again, that's a pretty extreme case. Number 23, install reflective window film uh, on your windows to make it more difficult to see your home or to see into your home. Um, that is obviously one way that the stalkers you know, can see and look into your life and all that kind of thing. And if you um, put you know, light blocking shades or window shades or reflective window film or something like that where they can't see in, then that's going to give you a little more privacy. Number 24, in an extreme circumstance where you're not able to move to a new town, and again, I highly recommend getting out of the town if possible, um, hire a private investigator and you could you could hire this investigator to have your your stalkers if again if you know who they are assuming maybe it's like an ex-husband or something like along those lines or an ex-boyfriend or something then you could have the private investigator um, follow them and determine where their like hangouts are where they're going where they're working where you know coming and going from where they're living who their friends are all that kind of stuff if it's stuff that you don't know um, and that way you know where to avoid, you know, kind of like if you got to be stuck in the same town with somebody and you can kind of set a certain pattern of this is, this is where he normally hangs out in all these different places, then you just kind of try to stay away from that. And that could potentially be helpful. Um, and that can also be helpful if you don't know the stalker. Um, and you know, let's say you, you could have the, the, uh, private investigator follow you to identify if somebody else is following you and then if they identify somebody following you then they follow that person until they get home so then they can find their identity so that might be one way to deal with somebody whose identity you don't know again this could all be pretty expensive and um, you know it, it's not easy stuff to deal with for sure all right number 25 make sure you have two two-factor authentication enabled on all your digital accounts. Anything that you log into, make sure that it's set up to ring to your phone. Now, that could be problematic whenever you're, uh, if you decide that you're gonna use a burner. So just think about that and think about how you, you know, you're gonna have to, to, to deal with all that. And it might be a situation where you have to have two phones for a time being, one to contact everybody on and one to just use for your you know, uh, digital authentications or whatever. Um, number 26, keep a low profile, avoid drawing attention to yourself in public places, you know, wear hats, sunglasses, clothes that don't have logos, very subdued colors, you know, just don't dress flashy, basically, that's the, that's the bottom line there. And then also, number 27, change your appearance, get a new haircut, get a new hair color, wear clothes that you typically wouldn't wear, just sort of get a new look, you know. Uh, number 28, if you have to meet with your, with your stalker, let's say you had a previous relationship with them, something along those lines, for whatever reason, if you have to meet with them, I highly ad advise trying not to do this, but if you do, make sure you go with a friend, make sure that you have a trusted intermediary there with you, like a lawyer or a police officer or something along those lines, but ideally you want to try to never have face-to-face -face contact with them at all. Number 29, uh, install a peephole viewer on your door that'll let you uh, look out and see who's on the other side of it before opening it up. Also, like we talked about, security cameras um, and that kind of thing so you can see who's coming with you know motion sensing technology enabled so that it lets you know when somebody's outside. Number 30, install high security door locks and reinforcement devices like door armor from, door, or from Armor Concepts. Um, armorconcepts.com you can check that out and uh, put that on all the doors and then you could if you need to take it to the next level you could go with ballistic window film on the windows um, you know it's probably best to have that professionally installed if you're going to do that uh, but it's an option 
Again, it might be might be just as easy. Oh, here, number 31. Uh, plant thorny bushes outside the windows and near the doorways to keep people from hiding in them. So if you don't want to mess with ballistic window film and stuff like that, if you can put, like, you know, plant, like, thorny shrubs and bushes and stuff, you know, outside the windows, that might help in keeping people away from, from the windows and doors. Okay. Number 32 is use a personal safety app. Um, there, there's a safety app called Noonlight by Safetrek, and that can alert authorities if you are in danger and need to quickly alert the police. Basically, it's an app that you put on your phone, and when you feel like you're in an area that they, you could get approached, or it's like a shady alley or whatever, you know, you turn this on, you push the button down and hold it down on your phone until you're safe. And then when you let off, it'll ask you for your PIN. If you don't put the PIN in in a certain number of seconds, then it'll call the police automatically. It's technology. Expect it to fail, but that's another thing that's out there. Um, and, and also in an extreme situation, you could also wear a personal body camera. You could wear it in public, you know, while you're in public places, like a GoPro or any kind of other wearable camera, and that's going to help, you know, just record interactions you have with people in public. The other thing it can do, though, especially if it's somebody who you don't know, if you are being stalked and you don't know who the person is, um, you could wear a camera on front and or on back on, a, on like a little harness, and they, you might be able to catch them on video and get a good, you know, high-quality photo of them. That's pretty extreme, but it is one possibility. Number 34 is never answer calls on your cell. Take the number down and call them back at least an hour or more later in case your stalker is calling somebody, um, calling from somebody's phone that you know. So basically just don't answer phone calls. Give it, a, give it an hour or so and then call them back. And the idea there is, is that if your stalker was right there with that person after a certain amount of time, they're probably going to leave and then you'll just be your friend when, when you call back. But you don't want to get surprised by answering the phone and then having to deal with them, having to talk to them. Uh, number 35 is use a nickname for all of your non-official interactions. So you move to the new town, uh, you know, ideally that's, that's what you want to do. And then use a nickname when you, when you meet people. Just don't tell them your actual name and just go by your nickname. So anyway, that is just a look at 35 different tips for dealing with stalkers. I um, appreciate you guys watching. If you could, uh, if you like this content, click the thumbs up button, click the subscribe button. We definitely appreciate it. And head over to realitysurvival.substack.com and sign up over there so that whenever I put content out, it will email you directly to uh, your inbox so that you know that we put a video out. Sometimes YouTube's not very good about you know putting uh, videos up on our feed and all that kind of stuff. So. Uh, we definitely appreciate if you subscribe over there. We've got free subscriptions as well as paid subscriptions. If you want to get in on monthly giveaways, then you can do that too. Right now we're doing a 25% off deal. And um, it. Uh, we, I think we've only got like 65 paid subscribers right now. So your chances of winning on the monthly deals are pretty good. So anyhow, that's it. Don't forget to live six Ps. Proper prior preparation prevents poor performance. Stay safe, guys.